All right, let's open our Bibles once again to Romans, the 12th chapter. We're, um, we may finish tonight. If not, we will finish Wednesday night. And we'll be reading verses 1 and 2 as our main text once again. Hallelujah. Romans, the 12th chapter, the first and second verses says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, or better translated, spiritual service. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we talk about here the, the Apostle Paul stating, uh, if we can close the doors, the, the, the main doors going next door, just so we can cut down on their um, harmonica and uh, mandolin and guitars and singing for youth. Uh, Paul makes, it tells us here that he does, God does not want us to be conformed to the world, be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Again, conform comes from a Greek word meaning to be fashioned, molded, or shaped according to and then, um, and then renewed or, or transformed comes from the Greek word metamorpho, meaning a, a metamorphosis. We talked about uh, how Je talked about the uh, parable of the sower and the word. What Jesus talked about how things uh, transpire through um, receiving the right, receiving the word, and letting it take root in our lives. Praise God. Uh, we've talked about um, the word being profitable. We've talked about the wisdom of this world being earthly, sensual, and devilish. But the wisdom of God is peaceable, easy to be entreated, and etc. Um, Kenyon says that in, in, in his writings, he says that a Christian who does not renew their mind to the word of God will imitate a sinner. And then we are to be transformed. Hallelujah. And so let's pick up here, and we'll get into this. We may get through all this tonight. That would be our, that would be our desire. Hallelujah. Being transformed. Look over in Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 17 through 24, it says, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Notice here that the, the mind is the seat of vanity. Hallelujah. And so that is where the problems are taking place. People, what they're thinking on, what they're meditating on, what, what, their, um, what their investment of their soul is in, is in, is, is in the realm of the, of the vanity of their mind. And it's important that we... Um, we don't walk that way. And he tells he tells a Christian, don't walk as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, uh, having the understanding in, in darkened, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness and greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you heard him and been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. This is what Paul says here. That you put off concerning the former conversation or manner of life the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The NIV, NIV says the attitude of your mind. And that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now so here Paul is telling us we've got to put off that old man and put on the new man and we do it by being renewed in the spirit or attitude of our mind. This process, mind renewal, is simple but imperative. Hallelujah. Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Word meditate comes from a Hebrew word, word meaning to mutter. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. And you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good success. Or uh, as one margin says, deal wisely in the affairs of life. So why is meditation important? Because it is the word, um, it is in the word that we find out who we are in Christ. What we have in Christ. Uh, where, we are, where we are and, and where we are going in Christ. Christ, and, we're, and so where we are and where we're heading in Christ, all right? The importance of the knowledge, of this knowledge, is a matter of life and death. It can, it can kill you, you know, the power of life and death is in the tongue, right? Well, I have a good, you know, uh, Jesus said in Luke 6, 45, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. <clears throat> so we find here, and then, you know, Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The believer, as they meditate on the Word of God, brings them to the point of whether or not they're going to have what's in them, good or bad. 
What are you going to have in you? What are you putting in you? What's coming in? Well, what you're meditating on. What you're feeding on. What you're, what you're, what you're giving yourself over to. Um, you give yourself over to junk, you'll get junk out. I, you know, Jesus said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart. Well, how did you get it? What you put in your heart. Amen. And you, what you put in your heart is what you're meditating on. That's what you, we got to be, we got to be aware of that. And that's why Paul wrote to the church at Rome and said that we're not to be conformed, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We're to change how and what, what we think on, how we think. And so that we don't think like a carnal, we don't think a carnally. We think godly. We think in line with God's word. Our minds have been renewed by his word, by the washing of the water of the word. So there are our thinking changes. Amen. Now let me say this. Renewing your mind won't get you saved or born again. That's, that's an experience in Christ Jesus by accepting and confessing his lordship. But, the, but after you're saved, you've got to renew your mind so you can stop acting the way you've been acting. You know, let me say this morning, God don't like ugly. Isn't that right? All right. In the new birth, we, we experience a nature change. Our spirits are born again. However, we spend our whole life learning to live by the former nature and, it dic and its dictates. Now we must learn what has happened to us and what we have become and then begin to, uh, begin to put on those things. Remember, Paul said, put off the old man. And he didn't say, look, he didn't say, now that you're born again, you have put off. He said, he's talking to those who are born again, he says, and now that you are born again, you put it off. He didn't say because you're born again, it's been put off. He said that you, basically because you are born again, put it off and put on the new man. Hallelujah. You got, you got to deal with that flesh. Amen. I mean, I, I kind of think of the apostle Paul, when you think about, you know, the things he experienced and the places that he went and he went to heaven, the Lord knocked him off the horse and he had a vision of Jesus when he got saved. Who art thou Lord? Then he had, the, he was blinded and, and Anna nice came and laid hands on him and received his sight. Then he went to, he went to the, went, in, um, went out by himself for 13 years or 14 years. Didn't talk to anybody. Hallelujah. Had to visit it was stoned and left for dead. We're caught up into the third heaven. And this guy says, I buffet my body daily. I keep it under. I got to deal with my flesh all the time. Daily putting on the new man and putting off the old. That's a, that's a process that we live by where we keep the flesh under. Amen. We renew our minds to the Word of God. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you do not renew your mind to the Word of God, you won't know what to put off in your flesh. I hear people say, well, you know, I just felt like I was supposed to do this. Yeah, but you know, I've heard people tell me they felt like they were supposed to do something that God didn't want, said not to do in His Word. <clears throat> How could you be feeling like you're supposed to do something that God didn't put in His Word and it be God? Well, I feel like the Lord, you know, it's like I said one time, this girl called me on the phone wanted some counseling, and I, I got talking to her, and she was wanting to, you know, she was supposed to be hooking up with this man in the church. He's going to be her husband. That's what she told me. God showed her in a vision that he was going to be her husband. Well, I, my, my first question was, why didn't you call your pastor? Instead of you calling me through the phone book. Well, I can't talk to him about it. And you may as well go ahead and get sirens out when they tell you that. If you can't go to the pastor, the church that you're, you're in, and, and, and bring something you're dealing with to him and say, you know, I need counsel, I need wisdom, uh, there's a problem. And you're just calling, the, you know, when you start calling dial a pastor on the telephone, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, and, and, and let me tell you what people do when they do that. They're just looking for somebody to tell them what they want to hear. And so finally, after about 20 minutes of talking to her, uh, uh, you know, she said, well, I asked her, well, has a man ever ex you know, expressed or shown you any feelings or anything along the lines that would, would give you an idea that he's interested in you? Well, no. Well, God, if you had any discussion, well, no. And I, said, I finally said, well, why not? She said, well, he's married. And you know, and he's, you know, you kind of saying this was a few years ago. I wasn't, I wasn't in as much control of my mouth then as I am now. And uh, we don't even talk about the, the, the difference there at this time. But before I knew it, it had come out of my mouth. I said, sister, you had too much pizza last night. Because that was an indigestion dream. God didn't show you you're going to have some other, some other woman's husband. Well, that ended our conversation. Hallelujah. And, you know, they didn't want to hear what you got to say after that. You, you just go ahead and beat your head against the wall. Are y'all here? Praise the Lord. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. 
Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation to know, to wit or to know that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing the trespasses unto them and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead be ye reconciled to God. Hallelujah. For he hath made him sin who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now here we find this out, because you know, we, we have to understand, um, and behold, all things become new. Well, you didn't get a new mind, and you didn't get a new body. So we have to take it in context. What's he talking about? He's talking about your spirit got born again, and it's brand new. It's alive under God. It got transformed. It became a new creation in Christ, but your mind's still there. And we know this, you didn't get a new mind because Paul writes on another place and says, you know, uh, be not conformed, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Isn't that right? So the mind, the mind has not been transformed. Your body didn't get transformed. You didn't lose 300 pounds the day you got saved or gain 50 or 60 pounds the day you got saved or get a different hairstyle and turn blonde from a brunette or redhead from a, from a blonde. You didn't, none of those things happened. You didn't get a different nose. You didn't grow hair. Didn't lose hair. Hello? Nothing physically changed. Why? Because it wasn't a physical birth. Nicodemus got caught up in that conversation. said, can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? Jesus said, are you a master or teacher of Israel and don't understand what I'm talking about? He said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. So Paul, when he's talking here, he's not talking about, when he says, you know, all things, are, you know, um, behold, all things become new and all things are of God. He wasn't, you know, you know we talk about all, a lot of times we joke with it, you know, all means all. Well, well in, within context. I'm inviting all of y'all to dinner. That don't mean I invite the whole city of Greensboro to dinner. The context is who's here with me. Right? So we have to understand some things are, 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 are embraced in a context and there are parameters around it. And, and so you have to understand it within, within that context. And so when Paul says here in 2 Corinthians 5, talking about there, if any man be in Christ, well, your, your flesh isn't in Christ, but your spirit is. Your flesh is here. Amen. And so uh, the context of this is, to, is referring to spiritual matters. And so... The mind, however, must be renewed. Well, one of the things we begin to renew it to is um, what the Word of God says about us. There's a lot of things God's Word says about us that we don't say about ourselves. One of our favorite sayings in the church is, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace, which is, an, which is not a biblical term. It's just not Bible. Find it and we'll go out and have dinner on me. Hello? It's just not in the Bible. All right? So, we do renew our mind. Well, how, how do we renew our mind? Number one, we start with the meditation of the Word of God. We quoted Joshua 1.8 a moment ago, the book of the law. Now, understand at the time that the, that the book, of, uh, the, the law was given, in Moses' books, the Pentateuch, was referred to as the law. The first five books of the Bible. Well, the first five books uh, in our, in our modern Bibles, they're not the first five oldest books. Joshua is, I mean, not Joshua, Job is the oldest book in the Bible, chronologically, okay? But really at the time that, you know, the, 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 when, when Joshua was being written, what they had for their canon or their, was the five books of Moses. It was, and it was called the, the law. Although it covered, it covered everything from Genesis to the time that, you know, uh, Moses didn't go over. Now Joshua's over here and he's, he's into the eighth verse of his book, Right after Deuteronomy, remember the last couple chapters of Deuteronomy, um, Moses is gone. He's gone up, it's gone, the way he couldn't go over because he struck the rock twice, and so forth and so on. And then Joshua took his place. All right? And so, uh, but then Joshua says this, this book of the law. So understand this, that the law they had was the word of God. So if we're going to, if we, if we kind of take that uh, and, and New Testament, New Testament eyes it, so to speak, and make it a New Testament application, we would say the Word of God. Okay? We, we, in, in, in quoting it in light of New Testament revelation, we would be accurate in saying that when you know, bringing Joshua into a New Testament mindset, instead of the book of the law, which we wouldn't just meditate on, on the five books of Moses, we would meditate on the whole Word of God, the whole counsel of God. Amen? So we would say, the Word of God is not part of your mouth. So the principle is the same. 
Okay? So Joshua says here, the book of the law or the word of God shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate or mutter therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, then thou shalt have good success. So the word of God teaches early on that we are to feed or meditate and, 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 and let the word of God be ever before us in our thinking. That's how you renew your mind to the Word of God. Now, the Jews would do certain things. Remember, God told them that, you know, they had to make frontlets. They would take Scripture and put it in little leather pouches and tie it to their head or tie it to their wrist. Uh, people, you know, Jews would put it in, in, in little holes at the door of their house. They would come by and they would kiss it as they went by. Uh, different things they would do. All following the law that says keeping the Word before you. And, you know, those are symbolic things. They were symbolisms of what we should do with our heart. Not, and just wearing it on your head don't do anything. You can tie a really nice, cool little leather pouch, tie, tack it up on the top of the head, go for it, baby. And it won't, really won't make a, a huge amount of difference other than you're showing that you honor the Word of God. But it's not enough to honor it. You must meditate and feed on it and let it become part of you. Remember, James says this, receive with meekness the engrafted Word which is able to save your soul. Amen. So we're to allow it to enter into our being. The 119th Psalm declares in each verse an aspect of meditating on the Word. The Word in our lives must take first place if we are, if we are to live by its precepts. We live, now listen, we live in an exciting era. Boy, has it gotten exciting. The Word can be uh, deposited into our lives through numerous ways. We must have our own uh, time with the Word. We must be in a good Word teaching church. We must, uh, uh, these, are the, these are the most two important things you'll do. Be in a good local church and have personal time with the Lord. And meditating on the Word. Amen. Amen. Um, we can also uh, have at our disposal, you know, different types of uh, teaching materials. Make sure they line up with the Word of God. Listen, listen if you're a spirit, I'm going to tell you something. Here's one thing you need to understand. Um, as a Christian, something doesn't go right with your spirit. You just don't follow after it. Now, let me, can I say something? I'm going to say something now. Uh, I, you know, churches sometimes will promote things, and the members think they're supposed to do it because the pastor promoted it. Now, I, I can tell you this. If your spirit says, eh, it means eh, and you just don't eh, you just don't do it. Even the pastor says, that's a good book to go read. Well, it may have blessed the pastor, and God may have spoken to him certain ways out of that, but you may read that same book, and because of the way certain things are stated, whatever, it, it, could, it may not help you. So if your spirit is giving you a warning, don't just follow your spirit. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't necessarily mean the book is bad or the teaching is bad. It may mean that where you are spiritually or where your thinking is right now, the, the way that is stated or the way that is ministered, it would not work for you. It can happen. You know, I mean, so you just, you just have to follow, you have to follow your spirit. When, when, when you know, something's going eh, on the inside, you better go, eh, okay. And just say, and listen, you don't always get an answer. You don't always get an answer. I know our church that I came out of a number of years ago, they had a guy come in and preach there. And everybody on the planet thought he was the greatest, latest, hottest, latest, greatest. He was smoking. I mean, he was cool. He was, I mean, he was the hottest thing on the Christian scene. He's writing books and he's doing tapes and he's 23. Got all kinds, got things called the Joshua generation, holding warring tongue meetings and all kinds of stuff. And they had them in our church. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't even go. I, 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 I kind of had, had planned on being out of town. They announced the meeting, but I didn't rearrange my stuff because something on the inside went, eh. And I was going to be out of town. I said, look, I've already got this plan. I didn't go say, there's something on the inside of me saying there's something wrong here. And I got, oh, you missed it. He was awesome. And, it, you know, and I, but every time I heard his, every time I heard the guy's name, Something just kind of went off on the inside of me. Something went right. Well, well, just about five years ago, they found out he was a homosexual. Been, 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 and had gone from traveling to pastoring and was sleeping with men in the church. That's just a nice way of saying it, okay? And that's about as, as, as far as I'm going with it. I'm just going to stay kind and clean with it. All right? Instead of getting vulgar. Hallelujah. But, you know, so listen, thank God for Christian teachings that we can get. Thank God for uh, some of the, uh, and I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm going to be real, real, real straightforward with you. I'm ha I've, I've been having a hard time for a long time with some of the stuff that's going on in the Christian media market. Just, just some stuff getting under my skin for some time. I don't support, I don't support any of them. God hadn't told me to, and, uh, you know, I'm talking about the Christian networks. I'm talking about the networks now. I'm not talking about ministers. But I'm, 
I'm telling you, when you start finding out that there's millions and millions and millions of dollars in properties and homes and houses, multiple jets, you know, travel trailers that, are, that cost more, uh, more than some people's homes for their, their dogs to travel in. And all of the guys that the Lord wants to, I, I can tell you what, you can take that travel trailer, you can put them dogs in a, in a, in a, in a kennel, a little travel kennel, and stick them in the back seat and they'll be fine. And you can build orphanages and churches and stuff all over the world in different places. You can build several for that kind of money. Just $100,000. Forget the eight, you know, the, the, the 13 estates that, that are well over a million each. You don't need 13 homes for the ministry. My God, you can just fly into town and stay in a hotel. If you had to. Hello, you don't need a rotating, you know, I mean one jet for the ministry. That, that particular thing is $50 million. That is a 737 size jet. Do you know how many times you can fly first class for $50 million? Well, well, well you know, they need it. Well, I, listen, I understand certain things, and I'm not begrudging, you know, people being refreshed and walking in the things of God. There's a point you, you cross the line. Hey, I get up on that. No, oh, anyway, I'm talking about getting where you're getting your food from. Number one, the other stuff's hurt the local church. You need a local church. You need a good pastor who loves you, who preach the Word of God, that's available when you need him. It's for counsel. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't, you don't, need, you don't need dial a prophet or dial a pastor. You can dial up Jesus. Amen. Any opportunity you get, just go ahead and, you know, it's also operator, operator, information. Give me Jesus on the line. Now, you remember that one? You remember that one, Brother Bill? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Acts 19.20. Now listen, so, you know, listen. Um, back to Psalm 119. Every scripture talks about the Word of God. So personal devotion, your local church, access the other venues. But they're not your, they're not your main place. Right. I knew people back in the day who just flew around the country and followed ministers. They went to all their meetings. Where do you go to church? Well, I just go, I follow so-and-so around the country. Well, that's unscriptural. He's not a pastor. Good ministry, but they're not a pastor. God didn't call him to pastor you. Hello. You can pray for him at home. Support a local church. Anyway. Acts 19, 20 says, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. The word will prevail in your life as you feed on it, act upon it. James tells us to be doers, not just hearers. The ongoing process of mind renewal is also an ongoing process of putting on the new man. Each step of mind renewal is a step of breaking world conformity and exhibiting the character of Christ. So we come, we come to this point, we, you know, we start out saying that, you know, we're to break world conformity by the renewing of your mind. We talked about how important the Word of God is in that, that, that process, meditating on the Word of God, being in the right place, feeding on the right things, doing the right things. And then we understand that not only is it important, these are things we have to do. This is a process that we have to engage in on purpose. Do I say on purpose? On purpose. On purpose. Flat out on purpose. Amen? Praise God. So, um... We, we can do this. We can live this way. I, I, I told you I was going to finish up tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, I was right there. I was kind of at the end. Like, the last Wednesday night, I, I got to the point that I couldn't really finish it. Not enough time, but so we, we, we're going to we went ahead and finish it tonight. But praise the Lord. So 30 minutes. Hallelujah. It might be a record. 